Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about remote control. I'm going to do a little project and I'm going to share it with you. Now, remote control has been around for a long time. In fact, in 1922, the U.S. military controlled an entire battleship by remote control. They reconfigured the USS Iowa to run by radio frequency remote. And uh, that wasn't practical then, and it's still not practical now. Modern military ships are not done by remote. But uh, the technology has been around a very long time, and why aren't more things remote controlled? Now, maybe it's because we don't want to carry around a big slew of remotes everywhere we go. Nobody wants to do that. There are other ways to do it. Your phone, or whatever you want to call your device, has uh, the ability to do things by remote, but you have to have everything web-enabled, connected all the time, uh, it takes a lot of power, it's more expensive, you have to have some sort of special proprietary application on your device that probably won't be supported in a couple of years and then your device will be obsolete, you have to throw it away. It's just not a very practical system for most things. But I think the main reason is, why would you want to? There's a lot of things that's just unnecessary, unnecessarily complicated to do so. For example, the lights in my house. How hard is it to turn on a light? Yeah, it's not that hard. But there are some applications that it's very handy for. For example, your car, you might have a key fob, they've been around in mass for 20 years or so. And uh, it's very convenient to lock, unlock, start your car or whatnot. And it's a very inexpensive device, it's extremely reliable, it functions well, it's intuitive to use, and uh, overall it's just a very elegant solution. And there's other things too that you can purchase that uh, you can plug into the wall socket that allow you to control it remotely. If you want to turn on a lamp or something that doesn't have a light switch going to it. But uh, I'm not going to be doing any of those things. I'm going to be talking about something completely different. I have an inverter, of course, because that's typically what my videos are about. And uh, I want to be able to turn this on and off by remote control. Now, you might be thinking, yeah, you can just buy an inverter with a remote. Well, yeah, I could, but that wouldn't be much fun, would it? Here on the table in front of me, I have three different products. Three inverters that are each commercially available, readily available on the market, that come either with remotes included or have remotes as an option. And uh, I'll talk a little bit about each one of these options when I get back from mowing the lawn, because my lawnmower is not remote controlled. Okay, now that that's done, let's get back to the inverters. As I said, these three inverters all come from the factory with a remote option. Either purchased separately or they come with it. The one on top here is a Powerbright 6000 watt modified sine wave inverter. Uh, it's a real beast to run just about anything, but it is modified sine wave. It has a hard wire option so you can connect it directly up to a, uh, a grounded neutral system. And it comes with this remote down here little box that receives the signal and a cable that just plugs into the side here. And this is the remote down here. Just a little fob with an on-off button. And it works pretty well. So that's one option. Over here, I'm not going to take it out of the box, but this is an Ames 2000 watt pure sine wave power inverter. And uh, it comes with this little fob down here with a little slidey door and an on off button on it. Uh, you probably can't see that very well on camera, but this particular fob here, this transmitter, you can actually purchase the same thing on eBay for about $10 after shipping. Yes, $10 after shipping. 
And I've opened up this inverter, and the board inside looks exactly like what I see on eBay. And this looks the same as what I see on eBay. So that just goes to show the quality that goes into this $500 UPS. It's a real, or uh, inverter rather. It's a real ripoff in my opinion. And that uh, same quality is evident throughout its design. It's pretty sad. But I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about uh, this little project that I'm going to do. And the third one that I wanted to quick mention was this one over here. This is a GoPower Electric. You can also buy them as Samlex or Thor. Uh, pure sine wave power inverter. And this one is excellent. This is a very nice inverter. I really like it. Uh, but this one does not have a wireless option. What it does have is a, uh, a Phoenix connector, which, which is screw terminals. And you can hook up an ordinary light switch or any other uh, closed open switch to uh, remotely turn it on and off. And uh, you can do that with a wire, or there are wireless options available. And uh, next I'll show you that option. So there's a number of different options out there for inverters that come from the factory with a remote option. However, they typically cost more and your selection is quite limited. For example, that GoPower inverter, that's an $800 inverter. The uh, Ames Power inverter, that's about a $500 inverter. The GoPower one, that's somewhere around $500 as well, $400 or so. Uh, so what if you have an inverter like this? This is an OSP Tiger Claw. I did a review on this. 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter. I'm quite impressed with it, to tell you the truth. And uh, this only costs a couple hundred bucks shipped to your door. So what if you had something like this and you wanted to remotely turn it on and off? Well, you can actually do that and fairly easily. I'm going to show you how here. So this inverter, you can see on this side, it just has a power switch and two outlets. Nothing spectacular. On this side, all it has are the cable connections. Ground, negative, positive, and three fans. So how do you do it, right? You have this power switch. Well, one way you can do a remote is to simply open up the case, solder across the switch, and put any switch you want on there, an ordinary light switch or whatever it happens to be. And that will work, however, it is not wireless. So, what I did is I went to uh, eBay. You can get them anywhere, but I just happened to buy it off of there. And uh, I got this box in the mail. So, let's see what's inside quick. So, inside I have two transmitters with an A and a B button, and it looks like they uh, both have batteries in them, which is good. So, two little key fobs like what you'd have in your car. And I have two of these boxes inside. This is a uh, labeled A. I assume the other one is labeled B, and it is and uh, a bunch of wires. So, these are what I'm going to use to remotely control this inverter. And you can remotely control just about anything. Um, from, uh, from a light in your living room to uh, an air horn on your car or who knows what, it doesn't really matter. But uh, on this particular design, if you hit A, it turns on A. If you hit B, it turns on B. Hit the button again and it shuts off. And there are countless different variations of uh, devices like this that are widely available and are available extremely cheaply. This particular one isn't the cheapest you can get. I'm hoping that that means it's better, but uh, we're going to see about that. So let's see if there's any documentation here. This is the only documentation that's really provided with this particular setup. 12 volt, 2, cha two channel on off, dry contact, remote control switch. And that's the model number that they give it. RP201. But uh, dry contact means that the two terminals on this side, the white wires, are not connected to any live voltage. You have to supply your own power to it. So basically it's just a relay that turns on and off. And that's what I wanted for this application. I just wanted to switch. I didn't want it to apply any power. And on this side, you give it 12 volts because it requires 12 volts to operate. And you can pretty much tell exactly what I'm going to do here already because this inverter has two terminals that are always connected to 12 volts, whether it's on or not. So there you go. I can connect the battery right up to here. 
And here is a switch that simply opens and closes whenever I hit the button. And on this side of the inverter, we have a switch that simply opens and closes whenever I flip the switch. So, with my remote, I can toggle the switch whenever I want from whatever the distance that your remotes support. This happens to be a 50 foot range remote. You can easily buy them to go up to a kilometer. How well they work, I don't know. I've never actually used one of these before, but I'm planning on modifying this inverter by putting one of these boxes in it so I can turn it on and off remotely. And this is a really easy way to uh, make any inverter that you might have a remote controlled inverter so that you can remotely turn it on and off without running downstairs to turn your inverter on and off or uh, running outside of your RV to turn it on and off or whatnot. I have it out of its package now and uh, let's take a quick look at it. I'm curious how long these wires are. Hopefully I don't have to splice them. Put it beside the inverter that I'm going to be installing it in and it looks like the uh, wires are pretty well long enough to put this thing anywhere. I have the two white ones, these are just the dry contacts, a blue one which is an antenna, and red and black. These go to 12 volts to power the switch. And before I put this in the inverter or even start thinking about where to put it, I want to make sure that this works to my satisfaction. So to do that, I am going to connect it up to this 12 volt fan just to make sure that it does something. And to do that I have these alligator clips. So I'm going to hook that up and turn the camera back on. Okay, I have it hooked up through a bunch of alligator clips and it's just connected up to this fan and whenever I hit the button the fan should turn on. It's on and it is off. So it seems like it works, at least at this very close distance. But uh, I want some way to figure out what the range of this is. I don't need it to be particularly long, but it needs to be long enough to be worthwhile. Well, I tested the range of it, and this little setup that I had seems to work fine all the way from the opposite corner of my house, inside my garage. So. The range of this is advertised as 50 feet, and it really does seem to do 50 feet, impressively. So I think that this will be worthwhile to put inside my inverter. So let's see if we can figure out uh, how to mount this thing in there. Next I'm going to take the inverter apart to see what's inside and where I can put it. But before I do that, it's always a good idea to discharge the capacitors inside of it. You can see that the light lit up there for a little bit and it beeped a little bit. The capacitors are now discharged and I can open it. Not exactly sure how, but if it's like most, you take out the four screws on the bottom and maybe the four screws on each end plate and it should come apart in some fashion. I'll do that and get back to you again. I have the inverter open as far as it'll go without doing some more major disassembly, so I apologize that you can't see in here very well, but I need a point to connect the positive and negative to power the switch and fortunately right here I have the two input power lugs on the outside of it. They go right inside the unit here and this is positive and over here we have negative. And they have these bus bars here that connect directly to the printed circuit board. However, there are also these drilled and tapped holes. It looks like one is used here for positive, one is used here for negative for something, I'm not sure what, doesn't really matter. What's important is that they have more. Here's another hole here, there's a couple more here on the ground, and I just happen to have some screws that fit right in there. So I don't even have to solder the wires, I can just screw them down, which is really handy. Now for the other side, this is the switch side that you turn it on and off, and I need to be able to get to that, and fortunately the switch is right here. So all I have to do is solder to those two terminals. And I should be able to hook this box up as long as I can find a place to put it. So this inverter is packed pretty full and there are limited places to put things. Once this cover is uh, down 
on this flange. This thing basically just about contacts the top of the inverter, so there's no place over in this whole half of the inverter to put it. And unfortunately, it's not wide enough in between these toroids and the case to mount this box. So there's really only one place that this box can go, and that is right here. Well, anyway, it fits about right here with, once this is closed, these cables are in the way until then. But I should be able to mount it about right here. And I don't believe that this will cause any heat issues. These film capacitors don't get hot. These toroids do, but they will still have good airflow going around them. The box will also be up against some of the circuitry up here. I looked at some of this stuff, and some of this is heat producing, but it's not terribly a terribly large amount of heat. So that should be okay. And I'll need to hold the box in place. And to do that, I could just let it rattle around inside. It doesn't really hurt anything. I mean, it's, it's just plastic, but I don't really want it to do to do that, I want to hold it down, fix it in place. So I think what I'll do is use some VHB tape, very high bond strength tape. Uh, I think it's a 3M product. I just happen to have a roll sitting around, so I'm going to use that. They use it to glue jumbo jets and ambulances together and such, so it's a, a structural adhesive tape. But I'll just put a little piece on the underside of this grate, about right here, and glue the box to it. Now that does cover up some of the ventilation grating, but there's plenty left here, here, and this whole end panel is all ventilated. So that really shouldn't cause any thermal concerns. And this box shouldn't get very hot. So I'm going to see if I can mount this box in here and connect up all of these wires. And once that's done and this is back together, I'll be able to test it out. Okay, so I have the box roughly positioned. And I routed the wires in such a way that they shouldn't abrade through or contact any fans and jam them up. So here's the plus and here's the minus on these screw terminals. Now let's see if I can uh, get the case closed with that thing in there and then hook it up to the switch. And now it's time to connect the wires up to the switch. And I think the easiest way to do that is to just solder it. And now I have to figure out what to do with this blue antenna wire. I will probably protect the end to make sure that this doesn't contact any live voltages. But I can't put it inside the case. It won't work very well because this is essentially a shield, Faraday cage, and radio waves won't be able to get to the antenna in there. So I need to run it outside somehow. And to give it the best possible range, I'm just going to put it through way back over here so the antenna can be as long as possible outside of this box. And uh, if anybody doesn't like that, they can just shove it back through one of these holes. But in the meantime, it will be out like that. And I think this box is actually going to be sandwiched in here pretty tight, so I'm going to try putting this back together without any of that tape that I had mentioned earlier and see how that works. And there we go. We now have an OSP Tiger Claw 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter with remote. Or at least I hope so. So let's hook this thing up and see if my modification worked. One thing to note, the box is in there really tight, it doesn't rattle, rattle at all. I didn't have to secure it in place, it's not going to go anywhere. So let's just hook this thing up and see what it does. Hopefully I didn't break the inverter, because I kind of like this one. Now I have these hooked up to a power supply instead of a battery. So I'm just going to hook them up with these alligator clamps. I'm not doing a real load test, I'm just doing a will this work or will it not test. Hook negative up to negative, positive up to positive. Okay. And now I will flip the switch on.
that seems to work. I have uh, a light bar over here that I have connected up to it, so I'll plug this in. And it does indeed output. So, let's try my remote. I'll leave this light on so we can see it. The remote shouldn't do anything while the switch on the inverter is on. It overrides it, but let's give it a try anyway. It clicks and does nothing else. Alright, now let's turn the inverter off. The light goes off, and I will try my remote now. On, off. There we go. OSP Tiger Claw 1500 watt with the remote. And this basic procedure would work with any 12 volt inverter. No matter how cheap or how expensive it is, you can always add a remote. Thanks for watching.